would be able to share with mm-hmm. us maybe some some stories perhaps so that we can look at how mm-hmm. to focus our research in the future. Sure. And one one thing, yes. um, you know, if if I was to be here, if I came in new as president and had to go through that with the intent of staying, uh-huh. um, you would have to do it totally different than I did. But the fact that I was interim, um, okay. uh, I could I could initiate change uh, much faster, uh, and in many respects, this, this mm. may sound not, not sound good, but uh, uh, maybe with even less communication on campus uh-huh. than I than would have been called for if I was long term. Mm-hmm. Is um, that because what you'd want to communicate more to be building relationships for a long term, and yes. now your priority mm-hmm. was. Writing My ship. priority was to make the change and survive financially. Mm-hmm. Okay. You know, we, we, we just absolutely mm-hmm. could not uh, incur huge deficits uh, another year. We would have been out of business. In fact, the, the uh, partner for the accounting firm that does the audit, who is the national director for higher education, for Cape and Krauss. So he works with colleges nationally. Uh-huh. Told our finance committee, the chairman of the finance committee said to him, before we fully, or before we launched uh, the plan, um, what if we delay on this and wait uh, for a new president so forth mm-hmm. rather than do it while I was here? He said, you'd be out of business in two years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Scary. Yeah. yeah. That so, had to be pretty a lot of pressure for you. Um, well, yes, but um, <laughs> you know, I, I maybe that didn't occur to you before. Now I've done it before. <laughs> you know, yeah. I did it at Asbury. I did it at Roberts. So but you stayed on. Finance, you you know? stayed on at a couple of those, didn't well, you? Well, Roberts. The at Roberts, I did. Oh. Um, at so Asbury, what was the difference was one then? Year. What was the difference? You said. Well, you, at Roberts. Um, uh, when I went there, uh, looking at the minutes then of the board meetings, I discovered, they didn't tell me this when they hired me, but um, they had been having conversations about how to declare bankruptcy. Um, in my first week, the bank called and wanted to meet with me, and they said, um, we want to sever our relationship with the institution. We want you to pay off your loan and, in effect, go away. Mm-hmm. Um, so, um, the other factor was I was incredibly young for the responsibilities. You know, I'd just turned 38, uh, and stepped into that, you know, Yes, you were incredibly were young. Were you the youngest college <laughs> wow. president in the history of... To turn things around. Wow. So, in any event, I didn't know what I couldn't do. And didn't so know I just didn't did know. It. Yes, yeah. <laughs> uh, so, I was able to oh initiate a lot of change quickly. Okay. Um, Similar to here or uniquely uh, different? Well, no, somewhat like here. Um, Again, because the school was in crisis, um, unless the school is in crisis, you can't really do that. Okay. You've got it's got to be a more deliberative process of engaging others in the process and so forth. I wanted to recommend two books to you. Cool. This Great, this you. is one. Have you read it? Oh, Henry Cloud. Not this one, but excellent. Okay. This this is one of the best things I've read in recent years. And it's all about making change. Is in, this one of the ones that you recommended to me? Um, uh, on the email? phone? In or the in, yes, yes. Yeah, this, it's probably yes. getting at the library for me because I requested it. Oh, and oh, they, excellent. They came in, I just haven't picked it oh, up. Oh, excellent. Okay, you'll, you'll find it fascinating. Oh, good. And it's going to answer, I think, a lot of your questions. Okay, good. Um, I have boundaries. He, he, uh, exactly. Yeah, I don't yeah. have any right now, but <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. it's a word. <laughs> uh, this this is really an excellent book. Okay. And then since you're dealing with higher education, uh, yeah, turnaround is the, uh-huh. another one I mentioned. Yeah. You may want to uh, look at that. 
this is a little more uh, specific uh, in terms of higher education and, and the areas to look at and so forth. Th this, this is more okay. general, okay. but just I'll really exceptional. Help. He's an excellent writer anyway. Um, he's a Christian. Uh, oh, yes. Yeah. yeah. You wouldn't know it by reading this book. Yeah. But, but, but if you, you read would, Boundaries, you'll find out. Yeah, yes. yeah uh -huh. right. Good, good. So what do you think uh, makes for a successful change, in your opinion? Or well, what have you seen that well, created us, successful changes? Well, for us, it was that we're here today. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what got and, us and, here? You know, the, well, uh, you know, I, I, I think uh, the financial cuts that we made okay. and restructuring the internal uh, finances, um, I, um, I think um, what we did in marketing uh, is now really paying off, um, and you know the data now, I assume uh, traditional enrollment is looking fantastic mm -hmm. for next fall, mm -hmm. and the IPD, uh, I think that the jury's still out, but it's on track, uh -huh. they're, they're meeting the contract obligations. So, uh, if that's successful, and we, I have every reason to believe it will be, um, that will bring a lot of resources to the institution. Were those the two areas at the other schools where you were that made the difference? Um, certainly at Roberts Westland, we started uh, adult degree completion in the mid '80s, okay. when the ideas were just being yes. discussed. Mm -hmm. Then we we copyrighted all of our material. And we contracted with somebody and sold our program to 70 colleges and universities across the country. So they launched the program under their name, but they were using our materials, and they paid us royalties for it. So we took in, I think while I was there, we took in 12 million from other colleges, and there was still 5 million in the pipeline yet the flow to Roberts from those schools. Then we ran the program ourselves. So that So it sounds like you've you've had some similar situations at the different universities that you've been to, colleges that you've been to. Were there but they're all they are all different. They're their own little environment. Oh yes. So were there yeah. any characteristics among mm -hmm. all of them that seem to be similar to each other that you think lent to it being ready for this type of implementation? Were there characteristics that we all have in common that you think led to the successful restructuring? That led to successful? Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, certainly a deep commitment to the mission. Okay. Uh, okay. All three were Christian colleges. People were there out of a sense of call, and uh, they were prepared to make major sacrifices to keep the institutions healthy. Okay. Um, you know, that, that's pretty important. Are you aware of any higher education institutions that did not survive this oh, type of a change? Oh, there's um, Man, I was just reading about um, some of those uh, <laughs> in the last week or two. Well, okay, been, let me rephrase it. Inside this. higher education, right. I think there's an article that actually cited some. Okay. Yeah. Are you aware of any consistent characteristics for those that would keep them from successfully making that turnaround complete? Not having these none items? Of the, none of the ones that uh, were cited were uh, uh, Christian colleges. Okay. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if they talk about some of that in here, too. Okay. Um, You, uh, yeah, I, I think if you read uh, uh, through here, you'll find Until examples I of institutions that failed. Um, Fragile universities, um, the role of the board, okay. so forth. Yeah. That helps, good. Yeah. 
You had just mentioned a moment ago about hope, which leads me to ask, what do you think are the key issues that need to be addressed within a culture as it goes through the turnaround? I think I think people need to to believe that things will get better, okay. even if they are going through a crisis. Okay. Uh, if they don't have that uh, hope for the future, uh, I think it it's very hard to make the changes and keep the institution healthy. Do you think there's anything different? Because I could I could see how that could be the same for secular institutions as well as Christian. Do you think there are any unique characteristics for mm-hmm. Christian institutions mm-hmm. only that give it that sense? Well, our sense of call, okay. I think. Uh, the fact that faculty have a sense of call when they come here. Um, for one thing, the salaries are lower uh, in these schools. Uh, really? And they, come, <laughs> and they come because they anyway. see it as a mission, you know, a ministry. Um, and stay because yes, of that. Yes, and they mm-hmm. stay because mm-hmm. of it, yes. Or they go to another Christian school. Right, okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. Is it possible for the hope to get ahead of the reality and then those two conflict? For a, Well, uh, I think transparency is really important. Okay. Um, and if, if whoever's leading the, the transformation isn't really transparent... Uh, uh, you know, they might promise the future and not really deliver up okay. and deliver it in, in terms of the decisions they're making. But if you're transparent in the process, uh, I think people will see that. Um, you know, one of the things I discovered when I got here is the uh, financial statements, the audit was never shared with the faculty. Mm-hmm. So, uh, we built that into policies mm-hmm. here. John, John, uh, John Potter. It's his mm-hmm. obligation to share that audit every year, mm-hmm. um, and he has already. Yeah. And the faculty yeah. thanked him at the end of the mm-hmm. of his presentation, okay. which was really very nice. Yeah. It was a change, an important yeah. change. Okay. The transparency. How do you think that should be communicated? I know later on we've got top down. Um, how, how can this change in administration be transparent? How do you think they get that information to us as faculty? Yeah, right. Well, certainly, uh, you know, I tried to share it when I was with the faculty. The, um, uh, Judson has this group that I met with every month, uh, the President's Advisory mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Committee, okay. uh, mm-hmm. the six faculty members, mm-hmm. right. and I tried to... Uh, uh, share information with them and and it was as transparent as I could be yeah. with them. So you gave them the process. freedom to share that then? Yes. Yeah. That was a change. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was a change. Yeah. I've been on that advisory. Oh, have you? Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It yeah. was. You know, I think you, in these schools, not just in the short run when you're doing turnaround, but even when you're president long term, like I was, I was at Roberts 21 years. Um, um, there are no secrets, you know, and you can't assume that you can keep something a secret in these institutions. Uh-huh. That they're, they're too tight, they're small, uh, so you might as well just start out assuming everybody's going to know everything. It's just a lot easier to manage. So it's better to come out in front of it rather than trying right. to follow it. Right. Um, what would you, I'm interested, I know this isn't one of our questions, but okay. I'm interested in the whole interim piece because I think it is very different, the choices mm-hmm. you make when you come in as an interim than if you know you're going to stay somewhere for 21 years. So com- communicate, or relationship building was one thing that you did differently. Not because you're yes. not a relational guy, because you are. <laughs> in but, your own way. But you felt like that wasn't where your time was right. best spent, was going out and meeting all the students and things like that. So, or as far as I go, faculty or administrators. And you probably you know, we, didn't want to get too we close. Never, yes. uh, I would think we, not. We didn't, uh, you know, uh, we were only invited out once in our, the time we were here for dinner in the evening, you know. Okay. Uh, and that was with a board member, a relatively okay. new board member. 
Um, no, I feel bad. And, I no, have a no, 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 I, I'm just sharing that with you to say that, that's not why I came. 